Okay, in this tutorial, I'll show you one of the ways that you can take advantage of Blender for creating your own textures, and then you can use your own textures within a video game, because you can either go license or purchase a library of textures that you might want to use in a game, but it might not be the exact look that you have. Well, this is a fairly low resolution rendering of some grass that I did in Blender using Cycles. Well, Cycles is so good these days that you can essentially make your own textures in advance. You might make your own water texture, grass texture, tree textures, and the realism can be so good, even though this particular rendering is not designed as a realistic rendering. I'm using a flat shaded sky here, and you can do a much better rendering, but this is the look I was looking for. So once I have created the rendering in here, in fact, I'll show you the particle setup for this renderer right here. Here's the particle system on this real quick. There's just a flat lighting model that I'm using here, shining it from the side. On here, here's my particle system. Let's see, so it's hair particles, five segments, 5,000 particles in this case. I'm using the strand renderer and some interpolation for the children, child particles, wave kink in there and then down here cycles hair rendering so if you don't have cycles hair rendering in here I'm using version 2.68 and if you don't see it you'll need to go over to the render tab and up here at the top you need to change this from supported to experimental and then that option will come up for cycles hair rendering then you can set the root and the tip size for the size of the grass and then you can shade how you want typically most people shade it with some kind of uh, texture <laughs> or solid color is the most common ways and then use an HDRI lighting model. I tend not to use that. I'm using a color ramp model to render this. So and then that's the results that I get and that allows me to have certain effects that I'm looking for. But once I've created the image in here then I save the image and the reason I do that is then for instance let's see if I just go get a maybe yeah okay let me see if I can find an old scene. Alright here's a scene like this so this, this has my basic lighting model for game engine. I mean texture mode and GLSL shading. So you can't expect cycles kind of rendering. But you might do something as simple as this. I might come in here and add a mesh to the scene. And maybe scale it up by... Oh, that's too much, but it'll work. I'll turn the uh, specularity way down. and I'm going to give it a texture like this so new image texture is what I want but first of all let's go over here and before I do that let me go into edit mode and just unwrap it since it's nothing much but a flat plane I'm just gonna mark the seam and do a smart UV project that's good enough for this particular case and then I'll just go grab one of those textures like this thing here just here's a texture and so all I've done now is now I've mapped that texture that I have here onto the scene like this and then I can change my lighting model in here and adjust it so this might be the background for my computer game so it'll be you know if I'm run if I press P then I have this image already so off in the distance so maybe what I'll do is I'll tile that out let's see and X and Y I'll just make it 30 and 30 let's see what that looks like that looks terrible <laughs> alright let's make it 5 and 5 5 and 5 well that that still looks terrible but okay we'll just go back to something simple but I think you get the idea is what you have it in the scene let's just add a Let's turn this into a sunlight real quick just so you can see it. There we go. And then suddenly that might serve as the basis if I had a seamless texture, of course. And that's what I would do. I'd design this in advance, in advance to be seamless based on the way I place my particles. So in the scene, I would generate my... I would create a vertex map, I mean vertex groups first, and put my grass around there and focus my camera accordingly. So then it would be essentially a seamless texture or close close to a seamless texture but then so then you have your texture in the scene and then you can add whatever to the scene like that and then you don't have to then you can basically create the textures the way you want All right, well, I hope that gives you some insight as to how you can do it because you, with this and water suddenly 
you know you don't really have to go look for other people's photographs you can just generate your own photographic work within cycles and then you're good to go all right well that's it for now and i'll see you in the next lesson